Hi everybody, I'm Pete Rogers, MD. We're gonna talk a little bit about how to help you improve your sleep. First thing is, what is sleep all about? Why do we have to sleep? Because that's when your brain cleans itself. The smartest you will ever be is right when you wake up in the morning, those first couple of hours. For a lot of people, till about 10 a.m., maybe till noon if you're lucky. Um, so, lymphatic system stands for glial, which are the, like glue is what it means in another language, and lymphatic, lymphatic system, your immune system, your, your blood clearance system. All right, so these are brought together as a contraction, lymphatic system, and what happens is your brain during the daytime has to be functioning. What is the purpose of a brain? The purpose of a brain is for an animal to be able to walk down a path in a forest, in a jungle, in a prairie, and be able to survive, all right? Why do humans and animals have brains, but plants do not? Because humans and animals, we move, okay? As soon as you start moving, you need a brain. You gotta know where you are, you gotta have a destination, you have to make a value judgment, go towards that, avoid that, you have to remember where you started from. You know, in the classic examples, a sea squirt. Sea squirt during its juvenile phase is like a tadpole, it swims around, needs a brain. In its adult phase, it just attaches to a rock and it becomes a filter feeder and its brain is reabsorbed because it doesn't need a brain. All right, so anyways, during the daytime, our brain cannot go offline. It has to be online so we can survive. What happens though, like all the other organ systems, the brain has to expel its waste products. And another reason why the neurons can't go offline during the daytime is they have to maintain very precise um, voltage gradients across their cell membranes. The blood is all over the place. After you eat a meal, your sugar goes up, all kinds of things happen in your blood. But there's a blood-brain barrier to keep it separate from the rest of the body so it can maintain a precise neuronal milieu. All right, so what happens is at night, like in Victorian England, they take their chamber pots and throw their waste products out the window. The neurons at night pump their waste products into the extracellular matrix, and the blood-brain barrier actually opens up around the neurons, and cerebral spinal fluid, the CSF, rinses over the neurons and rinses away their waste products. So that's why when you wake up in the morning, you're, all your neurons are as clean as they're gonna get, and you're recharged with energy. When does an animal need to be smart? when it's hungry. So after you eat a big dinner, you don't need to be smart. You got a full belly, go to sleep, you know, and uh, have some fool around with the old lady and go to bed, you're fine. But in the morning, you gotta be with it to go find some food so you don't starve to death. All right, so the next thing is avoiding caffeine. My personal recommendation, no caffeine. I recommend no coffee. I know a lot of people love coffee, fine, all right? But you don't really need it. I used to drink it for many years. The way you quit is drop 75%, 50%, 25% the last day for each cup of coffee. Take about a week at least to get rid of a cup and eventually get rid of all your cups would be my advice. You'll feel better eventually when you do that. You'll have about two weeks of cravings, then you'll be glad you did it. So you're just dropping 25% each day. Caffeine is a half-life of about six to eight hours, so if you're gonna continue to drink coffee, try to be done with it by 9 a.m., your last cup, so you have as little as possible on board at night. You'll notice once you stop the coffee, you sleep deeper, you sleep better. Okay, next thing is stress. Caffeine kind of just mimics the acute stress response, uh, increasing norepinephrine in particular. So avoid things that make you stress. Don't watch anything on TV that makes you stressed. Avoid people that stress you. To the extent you can, try to avoid psychological stress before going to bed because it can impair your ability to sleep. Um, next thing is melatonin. The pineal gland in the posterior middle of the brain produces your melatonin and it takes a couple hours to ramp up, especially the last two to four hours before you're getting ready to go to sleep. My advice is, Try to avoid bright lights. The pineal gland used to be called like the third eye and even have photoreceptors in some other animals. So you want to avoid bright lights. You can buy some low watt halogen bulbs. Halogen bulbs are a little bit better, preferable I would say. I don't like the fluorescent ones because they've got mercury in them. And the LEDs, they're kind of bright. I, th I think you don't necessarily want them. Melatonin's guided based on blue light because it's like sky blue. That means daytime to our ancestors. So you also want to avoid blue screens. Computers, cell phones that give off blue lights, I recommend avoid them to the extent you can in the evening. Um, only have a low watt bulb in the spots that you absolutely have to go to, um, that you do need that light on. To some extent, if you've got little tiny bits of light coming off your light switches or something, you maybe don't even need a light, but you, you know, use your judgment on that. The bottom line was avoid bright lights at night. You want your room dark. How do you determine how dark to make your room? It should be just dark enough that you can find your way to the bathroom. You can maybe just barely see where the wall is, but also pretty dark so you can sleep better. Humans are made to sleep at night, be active in the day. Try to avoid working night shift if you can, especially after 30, because we're really made to be daytime animals. All right, circadian rhythm. 
Try to go to sleep earlier if you can. Those hours you get before midnight, they just refresh you more than do the hours after midnight. Also, if you're a high performance person and you're in the middle of trying to make some great intellectual achievement, I can assure you, you will f get more out of it if you wake up, if you go to bed early and wake up a little earlier. Because let's say your brain is peak sharpness until 10 o'clock in the morning, 12 noon. If you're getting up at 4 a.m. because you went to bed at 8 p.m. the night before, you're going to have from 4 a.m. until 10 or 12 of your maximal intellectual function. So you're going to want that if you're serious about intellectual performance and you're able to set your own hours. Um, having sex before you go to bed, that really helps men sleep a lot. I don't know how much it helps women sleep a lot at night, uh, but it does for guys. Um, MSG, my personal recommendation is try to avoid MSG. I try not to eat it in any of my food products. What is MSG? Mono meaning one, S meaning sodium, like the salt, sodium, an element. G for glutamate. Glutamate is an amino acid, and typically all the amino acids in your body being L-glutamate, um, and what I'm trying to say is in the synthetic forms of glutamate, there's gonna be D-glutamates in there, which don't necessarily respond the same way to our regulatory systems. And so my concern is, that you can get increased amounts of glutamate in your blood, which potentially can have an excitatory effect on your brain. Glutamate is the number one neurotransmitter, most common by far in your brain, in the ballpark of about 75% of your brain neurotransmitters. So when you have a synthetic form of it, again, you can have the D-glutamate form. Normally, the L-glutamates are sequestered in your splanchnic cells, right along the lining cells of your gut. So you don't allow high levels of glutamate in your blood, which would potentially be neurotoxic. And then people say, well, what about the blood-brain barrier being intact? Yeah, there's circumventricular organs around, let's say, the third ventricle of the brain that are chemosensors. And because they're sensing the chemicals in the blood, they do not have an intact blood-brain barrier. In addition, really young children don't have a fully formed blood-brain barrier. In addition, a lot of old people have all these ischemic areas in their brain that do not have an intact blood-brain barrier. So my point is, there are areas of the brain that don't have an intact blood-brain barrier and are potentially vulnerable if there's high levels of glutamate in the blood, which could potentially be excitatory and neurotoxic. Okay, next thing is filter your water. It's a long story, but I need to get into all the physiology of it now, but I think it's in the best interest of your pineal gland that you filter your water. I like reverse osmosis filters, and uh, we'll talk about the details in some other lecture, but I think that's better for your pineal gland. Be careful, though, if you're over-filtering your water, because it could be hypoosmolar. We'll talk, we talked about it in my water lecture. All right, next thing is quiet. You want your room to be pretty quiet if possible. And if your house is noisy, you can't change that. You got a, the rest of your family got the dog barking or something. What you want to do is at least have a distracting thing. Like you could have the heater or the air conditioner a little louder. And so you have a consistent noise that your brain will habituate to and it helps you to ignore them, you know. Um, so those are some of the things you can do to help you sleep. Hope that was helpful for you.